The M230 chain gun is a 30mm single barrel chain driven autocannon. Situated on a hydraulically powered chin turret, the M230 provides an area weapon system capable of firing over 625 rounds per minute at targets in an excess of 3,500 meters. So let's figure out how to use this beast. Stig Reyes, Town 6, you're cleared to engage. Lead is a rolling in, engaging south to north, left in, right out. The following video is for entertainment purposes only. There will be no specific discussion about ranges, technical data, or aircraft survivability equipment, otherwise known as ASE. Questions of this nature will not be answered, and discussions will be deleted. Thanks. Alright guys, welcome aboard the H-64D, and today we're going to take a look at the 30mm cannon. First I'm going to move my eye heads out of the way so that we can see, and then we'll go to the weapons page. And uh, we've selected gun, we've got the inverse video, we've got our burst limits here, and our modes. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, just so we can get all of the symbology and everything showing up for us, we're going to go ahead and go to ground override on and the uh, weapon safe to arm. And uh, you can see that we've got arm indicated here. And we've uh, selected, through the weapons page, we've selected the gun inverse video. We've got our burst limits 10 through all. And what this means is if, uh, if I've got it set to 50 and I pull the trigger, as long as I hold that trigger down, it's going to count rounds down to 50. If I hold the trigger down just long enough to hit 20 and let go, it's going to stop at 20, okay? So it's not a, it's not click it and that's the number you get. As long as you hold down the trigger, that's what you're going to get. Uh, but typically we keep it at a 10 round burst and probably just shoot one or, you know, two or three bursts at 10 rounds at the target. And that'll give you some, some corrections. All right, over on the right, we've got our mode. So norm is exactly that. It's normal, uh, which means it's going to be moving uh, along with the sight. Here in the back seat, our sight is our HMD, so the gun is going to be moving with our head. Uh, but we can go to fixed, so what I'm going to do is just bring my uh, iHads back up. And you can see looking up here, we've got the uh, our acquisition source, which right now is set to the TADS. So what I'm going to do is was the gun, so weapon action switch on my cyclic up. And you can see uh, that we have the uh, checkerboard arm, still the inverse video. Looking at the bottom of our high action display, it says rounds 300, meaning that we have the gun. If the co-pilot had the gun, it would say C gun right above that. And if we were in the front seat, uh, it would say P gun, meaning the pilot has the gun. Uh, but we've was the gun. We've got all these indications and we're in normal mode. And now we're going to switch to fixed mode. So the gun is locked forward and that is uh, just a general crosshair of where the gun is pointing, uh, not corrected for range. All right, speaking of range, uh, depending on the seat, we've got a default manual range. I'm going to move the eye heads again for us. Uh, you can see down here at the bottom, we've got manual range of 1500. If we were in the front seat, uh, that would say 1300. So what's going to happen is this is the default range that your seat is going to go th to, uh, depending on the weapon system. So we've brought up the gun. The gun now, if we move it around in normal mode, it's going to make corrections to fire at 1500 meters. So that means if I'm shooting at a target that's 800 meters away, the gun is going to overshoot the target because it's trying to arc the rounds to the point that they'll hit a target at 1500 meters away. Now there's some different things we can do and one thing I suggest uh, during your startup before you go take off is go ahead and change this manual range. 1500 is pretty far uh, so I'm just going to change mine to let's just say 800. Alright so now my manual range is 800. I'm going to was a different weapon system and you can see that it's keeping that range for me. Another thing we can do, but it won't stay in the buffer. You're going to have to change it uh, multiple times, but we're going to go ahead and change this to auto range. So uh, hit that button. You can see manual range pops up here again. I'm going to go ahead and just hit A. Enter. And as I bring up the iHads, you can see down here at the bottom, our range is auto 0 0.01. And as I move my head, uh, because we don't have any real... Uh, look down capability. It's going to jump to a, a high number, but as we come up in the air, we'll look down and you'll be able to see that auto range change. Now, if I change weapons, you can see that I've brought my gun back uh, as my primary weapon. You can see we've defaulted back to that manual range. So whatever you plug in there, uh, just go ahead and pick something that you think is probably worthwhile. I'd say about 800 to 1,000 meters is, is probably a good number. And then you can just kind of uh, eyeball the target and make adjustments with your head. And we'll go ahead and take off, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so we're arrival here at the range. We're passing waypoint one, and now it is updated to waypoint two. We can see it off there in the distance. And the uh, first thing we're going to do is make some engagements from the back seat, the pilot helmet-mounted sight as our sight. 
Uh, typically, the pilot is going to use the gun uh, kind of in a, a snapshot, a self-defense uh, capacity. So we could be flying along and suddenly uh, somebody pops up in the wood line and shoots at us. It's a lot simpler for us to just quickly waz the gun, uh, make sure the aircraft's armed, and go ahead and fire. And nothing is happening, and this is annoying. All right, so there's one thing that you need to uh, remember is that the trigger... You can't really see it on the cyclic, but there actually is a trigger guard. Now, I'll be honest with you, we are working with Eagle Dynamics, uh, trying to get them to just go ahead and take it off. And I, and I think that they're going to. It's just low in the priorities right now. But there is actually a control bind for that cover. So what I've done is I've just mapped that to my joystick as a as a, a spare trigger that I have here that I don't use. And I just click it once uh, in, in flight, and I never touch it again. And that just leaves that cover guard open. But in real life, it's really just a, a sort of thing that you just kind of worm your finger up under. Uh, it's spring-loaded, so it just pops back into place. Uh, so you really don't think about it. Uh, but I understand why they put it in there. Just be cautious that if, if, if you aren't firing and you think that you should be, everything's armed, everything's selected, that's probably what the problem is. All right, so now that we have figured everything out, we've wazed the gun. Uh, the system is armed, and we have the gun. Uh, we're going to go ahead and engage the target. All right, you can see that I've got manual range set to 800, and what I was doing is kind of just adjusting my crosshair based on what I perceive that target to be. What, was he 800 meters away, or, or was he a little bit more, a little bit less? Uh, you can see as you shoot a far off target, again, we are bore sighted for 800 meters. I'm going to put my crosshairs on him as best I can. And our rounds are falling well short. Uh, that's because that target is further than 800 meters. Well, now we've got we've closed the distance and we've engaged and uh, destroyed the target. Uh, but you can see that the flexibility here of the gun, if we're suddenly taking fire from the left, uh, we can at least start throwing rounds downrange and trying to suppress. We just have to be conscious of that uh, of that range. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we'll change our range to, let's say, 1500, which is that default that we start with. And this guy is certainly closer than 1500. And you can see our rounds are landing high. And as we get closer, I'm just going to have to aim a little bit below him. And target. So just be conscious of that range and uh, make adjustments. Again, another thing we can do is switch to auto mode. We've got auto down at the bottom, and as we move our head, we can see that that slant range changes. So the aircraft knows its altitude, and it knows my look down angle. angle. <laughs> so it's uh, calculating that that target right there is approximately a kilometer away, 1.1, and it's going to make adjustments for me. So you can see my aim sucks, but that has nothing to do with the systems, everything to do with my head trying to make micro adjustments. But uh, you could tell in all those engagements as we close the distance that the gun was making corrections for the range. But again, one thing to just consider with auto as I uh, change to a different weapon system, I come back to the gun, uh, it's going to go back to that default number. Now, a lot of you are going to be using something like track IR with your gun. And uh, I guess one thing that I've discovered is uh, maybe some of you have kind of a dead zone in the middle of your track IR so that as you get to the center, uh, it kind of stays in place for just a little bit. Like right now, I'm moving my head at the same pace, but as it gets in the middle, it kind of stops for a little bit. That can be very challenging uh, trying to use the gun. Uh, it can get into a situation where it gets kind of stuck when you're doing things uh, off the nose. So just be conscious of that. All right, we're going to go ahead into fixed mode. And again, we've got that crosshair. And it gives us a rough idea of where the rounds are going to land. All right, in the front seat now. And the system with the HMD works exactly the same, uh, except, of course, we've got that manual range that's different. So you can see that our manual range default is 3,000 meters. But look down here. The pilot station that I just left still has the gun. So you can see that it says P-Gun. But I'm going to go ahead and waz the gun. 
and now I've taken the gun from him. So that's one thing that you guys got to think about when you're doing multi-crew is that you can accidentally steal the weapon system from the other crew member. It's something I did a lot uh, as a, a new pilot in the Apache because I just wasn't used to it. Uh, but now we've selected the gun. We've got 91 rounds and my HMD is the sight. So if I were to fire now, uh, we're going to be firing at a range of 3,000 meters. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and change uh, my sight to the TADS. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and move my eye hats because it is daytime. And I'm going to try to find a target and get George turned around and we're going to engage. All right, so we've got a target uh, roughly off the nose. And we'll laze him. He's at uh, two kilometers, uh, well within our range. We've got our gun selected. George is bringing us to a hover, high hover. We're at 540, 550 feet. Our uh, speed is uh, one knot. He's bringing us to a hover. All right, gun is selected and I'm lazing and firing. Now you can see that uh, it took a few seconds for those rounds to reach out to two kilometers. Uh, so just keep that in mind. There's no time of flight necessarily as far as a counter, uh, but it is gonna take a while depending on the range of your target. So there is no cooperative engagement with the gun. It can either be done, again, via the HMD or with the TADS, with a variety of range sources and acquisitions. Uh, but it is uh, pretty much just a, a one-man show, uh, which is pretty cool because you can have one guy firing the gun while another guy is shooting rockets uh, or even throwing hellfires. Someone else can be lazing for it. So there's a, a variety of ways to use the weapon system. All right, guys, that's the gun in a nutshell. And again, just remember, like the rockets, it's an area effect weapon system, meaning you're not necessarily trying to hit uh, one particular target, but instead really just trying to saturate an area with uh, explosive rounds in this case and uh, with warheads in the rocket. So uh, don't get too upset if you're not hitting the target on the first shot. It's really just meant to throw some, uh, some lead at the target and saturate the area. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. We'll talk to you later.